Well, amen. You know better than to sit down there. Let's all stand again in honor of God's word. And we're going to look in Numbers chapter 32. Don't ever say that when you come to church, you don't get your exercise. Hmm. Numbers chapter 32. This morning, we are going to um, talk on a, on a tough subject, but uh, I think it will be very beneficial to our lives, because I think that sometimes we have hidden sins that we can't really figure out what's going on in our lives. The devil will do that sometimes. We will have something in our life, we come to church and we feel convicted, but we really don't know exactly what it is that is convicting us. And you say, preacher, I, I don't know about that. Listen, folks, I do know. Because the devil is very crafty at what he does. And so we need to figure out what is going on in our lives. We need to figure out what these things are, how it works how the devil does it. And by the way, how many of you know, as my mom used to tell me, she used to say, son, anything you need to know about is right there in the Bible. How many of you know the Bible will show us? And we'll be set free. I think some Christians in our day and time just need to be set free. And I, I want to be set free, don't you? I'm tired of what the old devil tries to do to us and how he tries to do it. So this morning, I want to talk about these sins we hide. And I'm going to take it from, um, from Numbers 32, verse 23, where it says there, and I'm going to go right in the, almost the middle, it says, Behold, you have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Now, sometimes we take that as a negative thing, but it's not. I'm so thankful that the Holy Ghost that lives inside of me as a Christian shows me when I'm wrong. It's a good thing. So we're going to start out, not because you think maybe this is a negative verse, it's not. I want to start out saying this morning, what we just read is a good thing. So we're going to talk about that this morning. We're going to go over to um, Joshua and stay for a while. So I like, you know I like the Old Testament, so I've been kind of dabbling in that this week, just looking at the Old Testament, reading in the Old Testament, and God gave me something, so I want to give it to you. All right, let's thank the Lord for his word. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. Your word is good. It will show us who we are and what we need to do. This morning, Father, we pray that you will show us we want to be happy and have joy in this Christian life. And the devil is a liar. And he wants to steal that from us. So help us to understand how we can have this joy, and this happy Christian life. In your precious name we pray these things in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Tell somebody you love them before you sit down there. Yes. Now over in the book of Joshua. The book of Joshua, chapter 7. And uh, we're going to look there in verse 1 and just go through, kind of go around Joshua, just different places, and kind of talk about this hidden sin. You know, I, I've learned over my years as a Christian that, and I've had a lot of defeats, how about you? And I'm going to tell you that this morning. I have. I've had a lot of defeats in my life. A lot of times I wish I'd won, but I didn't. Because I let self get in the way. 
And a lot of you are here this morning, you can say the same thing, and it's all right. I mean, God knows that we're human and that we fail sometimes, but thank God we have an advocate with the Father, which is Jesus Christ the righteous. He knows our infirmities. He knows our life. So we have a lot of defeats, but I've learned over my life, you can learn a lot from your defeats from the time that... You know, you don't have that victory that you wish you had. And sometimes we just need to sit down and just think over that and look over that and understand that. That sometimes from defeat we learn a lot of things and God teaches us a lot of valuable lessons. And I hope that's what we're going to learn about today. Now, I know that I've uh, preached, you know, on uh, Jericho, you know, the, the marching around. I know all that. But what you've got to do today is you've got to go a step ahead now. You, you've got to look at the little city of Ai that was a defeat, a stumbling block in the life of Israel the Israelis, they let pride get in their lives. We're going to see all that. I think a lot of times these little hidden sins that we have in our lives start because of pride. Pride in our lives. We don't want to do anything about it, you know. We're just going to let that lay there because it's mine. It's mine. I'm going to keep it. Don't matter what the preacher says. Don't matter what... The Bible says, I like it, I'm going to keep it. And a lot of times those things start to fester and from that sin comes other little sins. And those other little sins in our lives, where we've let that thing fester in our lives, those other little sins sometimes are hidden or or we can't just put our finger on what's wrong with us. Why am I not happy? Why am I not getting it? I've heard that so much, I'm sick of it. You're just not getting it. Well, you're not getting it because you're not listening. So, in Joshua 7, 1, we read the background of this conquest of Ai. The Israelites, as I said, had defeated the mighty city of Jericho, and for some reason, they let their victory turn into pride. And that pride turned into something else. It turned into prayerlessness. I believe we live in a nation today that pride has turned our nation into prayerlessness. We don't pray anymore. We don't really know how to pray anymore because we haven't done it in such a while. And I'm talking about real prayer. So... What happened to them, now listen to this because you'll understand that's where we are, we are today. And I always say that, but it's so, uh, it's so highlighted here that, that from this prayerlessness, they begin to presume on God. To think God owed them something. And I think this morning that a lot of our problem is we think God owes us something. And just because they had won that one victory uh, there at Jericho, they had won that one victory, and so amazingly how God had, had given them that victory, they thought, well, we don't have to do anything. God's just going to give it to us. And that's kind of where we're at. Oh, God would never bring us down. God would never let that happen. And even in our own individual lives, we hold these little sins. We get convicted every time we come to church. God deals with us through the Holy Spirit as He's supposed to. Uh, You know, we think we pray, but we really don't pray like we should pray. And then all of a sudden, we're in this pride thing. And we come to church with so much pride that we can't hear the Holy Spirit speaking to us. We presume God just because he's given us victory in the past doesn't mean through our sins he'll give us a victory again. And so we have to learn how to understand this. So what happened with this little conflict with Ai? 
Here's what happens. See, they presumed uh, God would just uh, take care of them, but they sent out an army, and this army didn't do the things that they were supposed to do. They, they didn't follow God like they had at Jericho. You know, six days, march around, and then seventh, you know. They didn't do these things. They didn't do it the way God wanted them to do it. And may I say to you this morning, there's a lot of places that doesn't do it the way God wants them to do it. We may not be in trouble now, but sooner or later we're going to be in trouble. There's families in this church this morning, and I'm going to just say it, that don't do it the way God wants you to do it. Now, God's very reasonable, and God's very uh, careful with us, and He loves us. But sooner or later, responsibility of that thing that you've allowed to get in place of God is going to come to haunt you, because God will let it to bring us back to where we need to be. So the same thing had happened here with the Israeli army. They didn't have the Ark of the Covenant when they went to this little war. And they said within themselves, oh, it's just a little city. No little city like that will ever defeat us. No little sin like that will never defeat us. But what they didn't understand is they sent 3,000 men out to do a job that God wanted done, and those 3,000 men were destroyed by that little city. They were soundly defeated. They were so defeated that they began to wonder why. You ever felt that way? You know, we're so defeated sometimes because of our sin, because of us. Because of the things that we've allowed in us. Because of the things we're listening to. The things we're watching. The things that we're allowing to happen in our lives. Because of those things, we are defeated. And we come to church and there's no joy and there's no happiness and there's no life in us. Because we're defeated. Because of what we've allowed to come in. Oh, we want to blame it on everybody else. Our Sunday school teacher, you know, our, our preacher, our, our, you know, our singing, our this, our that, you know. We want to blame it on everything. And I'm here to tell you, look at me this morning. The blame stops here. And the blame stops there with you. Because we've allowed the little things to make the big thing so that we can't hear God. They did not hear God and they were soundly defeated. They wondered why. God tells us why in the first verse. And I want you to understand today, and I want you to imagine that you're there in that Israeli camp. I want you to imagine that in your mind. You're right there in this Israeli camp. Jericho has just fallen. There's party and there's, there's happiness. There's, there's everything. Now, they didn't, uh, Jericho didn't fall because they had atomic bombs uh, or because they had all these battering rams and all this military strategy. But it fell because of the plan of God. I want you to understand that. God won the victory. Not your plan or not my plan. The victory in your life this morning will only be won because of God's plan for your life. You cannot be in God's plan if you're out of connection with Him. And there's so many people that go to church on a day, you know, on Sunday basis, and they go to church. But they, they let these little things keep them from really hearing from God, and they're not in God's plan, and they sit here and wonder why they can never have any joy and never have any happiness and never, ever know the plan of God. It's because you're out of the will of God. Israel is out of the will of God. 
So they had won this victory. I mean, they had done exactly what God had told them to do. And the walls came down flat. And after this, they were rejoicing and celebrating. And the 12 tribes of Israel in their camps, they all gathered in their tents. And they gathered there for rest because they were tired. They had done exactly what God told them to do. And by the way, can I say this? God's plan is never easy. God's plan is hard. I mean, I'm sure that some of them thought that that was a silly plan to march around that city, you know. I mean, they were just going in circles. But it was God's plan. And on that seventh day, what happened? What happened? Tell me. They just fell. I don't know if God just went down there and shook them real good. This was a mighty place. Do you understand that? They had never been defeated. But they did exactly what God said to do. And the Bible says the walls fell and they took that city. They took it. But then in this camp of the Israelis, you've got to understand, this city was a very prosperous city, a lot of riches, a lot of goods. And they had gathered in their tents to rest from this day of battle. They're all asleep, but there's one that could not sleep. His name was Achan. He couldn't sleep. He was tossing and turning. You get in the picture. He was taught. You ever been that way at night? Just toss and turn. Sin will do that to you, by the way. He was just tossing and turning. And you know what he was thinking about? He said to himself, We left gold and silver and diamonds and clothes and food. We left all that stuff over there. It's no good for nobody, and I'm, I, I just can't get over that we left that stuff over there. You know what the devil uses on you? The same thing. Oh, you deserve better, honey. Honey, you're just better than the other ones. And you know that you need that stuff. And you know it's just laying right there for your taking. It's all for you, honey. God will understand. He understands you need that. He understands that guy that you have, that you need that, that you can't give that sin up. He understands. That's right. No. <laughs> That's a good boy. <laughs> he understands. So Achan's in his tent. He's tossing. He's turning. He's thinking about all the spools of this battle and how they were just laid out there in the city of Jericho, just ready for his taking. But he forgot one thing. God said, because this is your first victory, do not take any spoils in his word. You see, the treasure of our life this morning is Jesus, but the treasure of our life living here is his word. That's our treasure. If in, within that treasure is all the answers to life, as I said just a minute ago. And God says to us, he's our treasure. He's the pearl of Read that. He's the pearl of what? Great price. He's the one we serve. And God says, all you need is me. And that's what God was really saying to, to the Israelis. You don't need gold and silver and precious stones. You don't need all that stuff. All you really need, let me say something to you young people, all you really need is him. He's all we need. Matter of fact, when times come in upon us and trials come in upon us and stress and pain, He's all we got. Amen. He's all I've got this morning. Amen? 
God was trying to teach these Israelis the same things, but here's Achan, and he's saying, no, I need more. That's what the devil tries to do to you, make you want more. But never mind, God has said unto them, do not take the stuff. Leave it. But the old devil says to Achan, he says, you deserve these things, honey. You live out here in the desert. You have no fine clothes. You have no gold or silver. This is not fair. God should have never done this to you. So what happens? He sneaks out of his tent. And he goes to the city of Jericho. And he does the very thing that God told him not to do. I can almost see the greed in his eyes. As he walks through that city, and here's a gold piece here. He's got his little satchel, he puts it in there. Here, here's some silver here, he puts it down there. Here's some nice silk clothes, he puts them in there. Here, here, here's some artifacts that are worth lots of money, he puts them in there. And he carries them back to his camp on his back. And here he has done what God had disallowed. Sin is doing, and hidden sin, listen to me, is doing what God disallows. It don't matter what you think. It doesn't matter what the devil says that you deserve and what you need. Sin and hidden sin is doing things that God disallows. Always has, always will. It doesn't change just because the times have changed in your life. It never changes. And most of the time when we sin and have these sins, we're just like Achan. We sneak out. We sneak out of our Christian life. We sneak out of the things we know that we need to do. We sneak out. We're hiding. Achan was hiding his sin. From the rest of this, these Israelis. So he takes it back to his tent. All these things he's stolen. And he makes a hole in the ground. He covers them up. And that's what we do. We cover up. Oh, I don't want anybody to see this preacher. Nobody can know this. You may be here this morning, you know what I'm talking about because that's you. Nobody could ever know this about me. If they knew this, it would change their mind about who I am. Well, can I say something to you? Just like Achan brought those back, dug a hole, put them in, his, in the hole in his tent, listen to me, and he thought he had hid all of that from everybody. Let me tell you something, folks. He didn't hide it from God. God knows you this morning, individually. Just like he knew Achan, individually. So, after stealing all this stuff and hiding it, then the Israelis, they go out to battle against little old Ai. It's nothing. Matter of fact, God could have and blew it off, blew them out where they would never be heard of again. That's what God can do. But they decide to go fight them, and they go fight them with three thousand men. And the Bible says they were utterly destroyed. Let me say something to us this morning, as Christians: we keep those sins, those those hidden things in our lives, if we keep them, we will be destroyed. You say, oh no, preacher. Let me tell you something, folks. You've never been whipped till you've been whipped by God. When he whips you, it hurts. So he hides them and they are totally defeated. The, the army is. And what kind of sin is it that Achan committed here? It, was a, it wasn't a sin where he went down to the local bar and got drunk. It wasn't the sin where he had another woman and committed adultery against his wife. No. Those sins there are open sins. People see those sins. These sins are hidden sins. These sins are what we think we can get away with. It's a sin that nobody sees, but 
It's a sin that will bring defeat to your life. By the way, it will not only bring a defeat in your life, it will bring a defeat to the church. Achan's sin brought defeat to the camp. Thousands of souls died because of his sin. You say, oh, my sin is my sin, and, and, and my sin's okay because I'm going to keep it to myself. Let me tell you something, folks. Your sin affects other people around you. Be sure your sin will find you out. It'll hurt a church. It'll bring defeat to the life of a nation. I believe our nation right now, because of our sins, we're being reprimanded because of our sins. The first thing I want to talk to you about today <laughs> is these hidden sins. I want to talk about these hidden sins that conquer us. God's people are not to be defeated. That's who we are. We've, we're supposed to have victory. And some of you might be here today and you're saying, I've had, I've had defeat in my life for a time now. I, I'm just, I feel defeated. I, I feel down and out. Listen, folks, that's not the way. You may feel defeated for a day or for a few hours or whatever. That's not the way a real Christian is supposed to feel. Look at me. A real Christian has victory. Victory is ours, saith the Lord. A real Christian this morning is supposed to have victory. We're not, to, we're not supposed to stay in that defeated state. Now, we may have defeat every now and then, but we won't stay there. So this morning, if you have been there for a long time, then you need to deal with God. You say, you, you have no right to say that to me. I'm not saying that to you. I'm saying what God wants me to say this morning. You have no right to stay there. Because God will forgive you. The problem is, is our pride. These hidden sins conquer us. They bring defeat where victory is supposed to be. We begin this journey into freedom. We learn God wants to prosper His people. Look at Joshua 1.8. I told you we'd be all over. Joshua 1.8 says it this way. This book of the law shall not depart out of my mouth, uh, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way. Read that with me. What? And then thou shalt have good. What? That's happiness. That's joy. That's feeling like we're accomplishing something in this Christian life. That is what the problem is with most Christians this morning. They feel like they're not accomplishing anything. And it comes from hiding these things that God will bring out to the open. Achan was a man that brought sin and defeat into the camp. It was just one believer, just one soul that did this. But the whole camp, the whole Israeli camp suffered because of this man's sin. And how subtle it was. All Achan did was go over to the camp and, and, and stole these things and brought them back. He thought it would bring victory to his family and give him, uh, uh, you know, money. That's what he thought. In his own mind, it was just a subtle thing. But to God, here's what it was all about. Those spoils of that place was showing the victory of God upon the the Israelis, that God had His hand upon the, these people, that they were His and nobody else's. So when He went over and stole these things 
The things that were dedicated to God, he stole from God. And I'm here to tell you this morning, if you're saved, you're dedicated to God. You are not your own anymore. You belong to Him. And when you allow these hidden sins to stay in your life, you're making a mockery out of what God has done in you because of what He done. But it wasn't to God. He desired these things. The Bible says that the sin we cover up, plant and hide wherever it is, because that's the way God works in your marriage. Hidden sin will bring defeat in your business. It will defeat an entire army and an entire new. Really good. I'm going slow this morning where we hear this whole sermon. It does not belong to you anymore if you're a Christian. Your life belongs to God. The Bible says He has purchased you with a price. And that price was high. That price cost a lot. I want you to understand that. So you just need to give that thing to God this morning and say, I'm sorry. Because Jesus had to die for those sins. Listen, if you bring those sins, uncover those sins to Him and make you whole. How many believe that this morning? Say amen. amen. He will. Give it, give it to Him this morning. First, God is very serious about who you are. Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own, for you are bought with their gods. Your time belongs to God. Your talent belongs to God. Your tithe belongs to God. You can come to church every Sunday and you can sit in the pew and you can look so righteous but still leave this church and commit that, that hidden sin in your life because you've okayed it now. You see, it's been there so long it's become okay in your life. You've okayed that sin in your life but God is not okay with it. You can say, I don't drink. I don't go out on my spouse. I don't do these things. And you can represent yourself this morning as being holy and righteous. But if in your heart you have that hidden thing, not devoted totally to Him, and quit being devoted totally to you. Lukewarm. He says, someone that's lukewarm, I'll do what? Spew them out of my mouth. It makes me want to vomit. That's what he really means. Your hidden sin makes me want to vomit. You say, preacher, why are you preaching this today? Because, folks, I believe in our day and time, there's a lot of people that really want to have happiness and joy, but they can't because of these sins. And nobody knows your heart this morning but God. But I know this. Hidden sin will bring great defeat to your life. You will never have victory with this sin. If you withhold from God this morning and disobey His Word and neglect His prayer time and the study of His Word, you will be defeated. You will never have victory in this life. God says your life is holy unto Him. God's Holy Spirit is jealous of you. He doesn't want anybody else to possess you. But I'm here to tell you with hidden sin in our life, there's something else that possesses us. It takes the children of God away from all the fulfillment that God has for their lives. Are you a child of God this morning? Do you love Him with all your heart? You see, only those that love Him with all their heart will be the ones that will get rid of these things. People that don't love Him with all their heart will never get rid of these things and they'll be defeated. These hidden sins keep God from hearing us. We'll be conquered if we have these sins, but it keeps God from hearing us. Look at Joshua 7, 6. 
And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord until the evening tide. He and the elders of Israel, this little city, and we're totally defeated. We won one city and lost this one. What's wrong with us? It's that way in church sometimes. It really is. In church, sometimes you'll go through those seasons where they're just, the Spirit is just moving and, and people are getting saved and people are testifying and, and everything just seems to be on that spiritual level and then all of a sudden the bottom drops out. What happens? One week, the Israelis are praising the Lord and thanking the Lord for the victory and for the, the battle that's just been won. They're praising the Lord for the way He did it and His plan and, and everything about it. And then all of a sudden, pride slips in. And they think nobody can defeat us. Nobody will ever hurt us. Nothing can ever happen to us. America has been that way. And I'm here to tell you, some Christians are that way. And all of a sudden, the bottom drops out. We won't blame everybody for it. We won't blame the times, the ways, the people. We won't blame each other. We want to blame everything for the reason that the Holy Spirit's not moving. And I'm telling you the reason why. And you better listen to me this morning because I'm telling you the truth. When there's sin anywhere, hidden sin that we hold on to, that we love so, more than God, because if we didn't love it more than God, we'd get rid of it. Sin that has slept in and that has, has kept us captive and will not let us go because we won't give it away because we like it so much. I'm here to tell you, it affects everything. And one day we'll answer for it when we go to heaven. When we stand before God. The Bible says here that they tried everything. They're praying now. But they pray too late. And I want you to know sometimes we just pray too late. You say, preacher, there's never a bad time to pray. I want to show you something here. They didn't pray before they went out to battle. They didn't pray as God commanded them to pray, and God commands us to pray the same way. They were basking in this victory. They, they had committed these hidden sins just as surely as Achan had committed it. Their pride got them. Joshua begins to pray. You've never seen such a prayer meeting. Man, they're praying. They're throwing dirt on their head. They're putting their face in the dirt. They're crying. They're sweating. They're, they're really intent to pray to God. But God's not listening. You see, they were prideful. As Joshua begins to pray, it must have impressed everybody around him because the elders from all the 12 tribes came together to pray also. Boy, that was a, that was a scene. They had humility. They were, they were humble before God. They heaped dust, as I said, upon them. They, they cried out to God. And, and that's the way sometimes we do. You know, we'll come to this altar and, and, and we'll pray and we'll cry out to God. But we didn't pray about the thing that is keeping us from God. And we go out the same as we came in. God's tired of that. He's tired of it here. Oh, they were doing all the right things now. But here's what happens. In their prayer, because of their pride, Joshua begins to lay the blame for failure on God's door. He says, oh God, what's wrong? Oh God, uh, we should have stayed in Egypt. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to destroy us now? Oh God. You see, hidden sin always brings out the blaming of God. God, we're not victorious because you didn't give us victory. Some people pray that way now. 
God, you're not answering our prayers. God, you're not answering my prayer. I need this, God. Why are you not answering my prayer? The truth is our hidden sins hinders our prayers. God said to Joshua, get up. It's not time for praying that way now. It's time for repenting. Prayer is no substitute. Listen to me, folks. Prayer is no substitute for obedience. If you're not going to be obedient to God when He tells you to do something, don't pray. Don't come to the altar with this pride in our life just to say that we're going to do this just to show God we're trying. Listen, folks, if you come to God, be obedient. Because that's what God wants, obedience. He don't need you to show up, and we think we're doing God a favor by showing up to church. He don't need you to show up. He needs you to give up. He needs me to give myself to Him so that He can do a miracle in my life. And this morning, there are so many people in this world that have these hidden things in their lives, whether it be a faith issue, whether it be a boy or girl issue, whether it be a money issue about tithing and giving back to God what He should have from you, your time, your talents. Those are all things that can be hidden sins. But it'd be your faithfulness. Oh, I, I just get away with it, preacher. I, you know, I, don't, I know I need to be faithful, but he understands. I just get away with it. No, you don't get away with it. Because one day you'll answer for it. You see, your sin doesn't just affect you. It affects everyone around you. People look at you and they say, that's a Christian. Well, why ain't they... If they say they love God, why don't they? It comes back to us. You're saying, preacher, this is just too hard. It is hard. It's hard being a Christian this morning. It's not an easy thing. You have to step up. We have to be big boys and girls. Because God wants us to be. The Bible says we as Christians are in the army of God and we have to know that we stand in the gap. The gap this morning is sin. And we're the only one there to show people the sin of a nation and the sin of an individual and the sin. And through preaching and life living as a Christian, that's what God expects out of us. So I don't, I'm not apologizing for nothing. Because it's a truth. As a church, I'm just being honest with you, as a whole church, our city's going to hell, folks. Our county is going to hell. And we meet at church and hear these messages and, and sing these songs and practice what it means to be a Christian and go out of this church and tell nobody about Jesus. Shame on us. Shame on us. It's not all about you. It's about people getting saved and knowing Jesus. We need to step up. And it starts with forgiveness. It starts with repenting. It starts with getting rid of these hidden sins. I don't need to know them. Only God does. We need to bring them to Him. So we can have revival. I'm ready. Aren't you? Thank you, Lord. I love you. Please forgive us of our hidden sins. Forgive me of my hidden sins. 
Help me to live closer to you. I want more of you, Father, and less of me. I need you, Lord, to touch this congregation today and to touch me. Whatever is hindering us, whatever is keeping us from the full glory of your power, I pray, Lord, that you'll come. Show us, Father. Convict us, Father, through the Holy Spirit. Help us never be the same because we've given you that hidden thing or we've given you that life that maybe we've been holding back. Please help us. We need revival. We want revival from doing that. Forgive me of my hidden sins. Help me, Father, to live life and live it more abundantly.